So many of you heard me talk about when this uh, Indian was delivered, uh, it had some kind of scratches. And I'm just gonna try to show you this because I'm gonna try to go in and polish this out. Um, now, obviously this isn't my bike, but here you can see down, the closer you get to the seat on the tank, you can kind of see this marring and get down here where you can see it a little better. So it's much easier to see in person than it is on camera. It's hard to capture some of this on video, but there's a lot of these scratches. And I'm not sure if when they shipped this bike, if they set something on the tank. Um, and as it was going down the road, it was scratching the paint, but you can see the gas tank is just really scratched up. So let's see if we can't, uh, let's get back down here, see if you can get in the light, see a little bit better. Some of that, there you go, see that right there? Or it could have been the person that rode the bike before. You know, it could be a boot got drug across it when they got on the bike. I don't know. Well, let's see if we can't fix some of this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, I did wash the bike, but I'm gonna, just in case there's any more surface dust on here, I'm just going to rinse it off with some clean water and just wipe it down, dry it off. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with some some alcohol and we'll do a little IPA treatment on here just to make sure there's no paint protection on the Okay, now I'm coming in with a, an IPA solution. I just want to uh, go over this, make sure there's no residual paint protection on here. I didn't even know if it had any paint protection. I'm not sure what they come from the factory with. But it might be a bad idea to put some paint protection film on this area just to protect it. So what I'm going to be using today is the Griot's I wish you could see that. The correcting cream. And I have an orange pad on my polisher. Just shaking it up really good. And let's see if we can't get some of these scratches out. speed. I'm going to speed up the video here because there's no reason for you to sit there and watch 10 minutes of me running this polisher back and forth. By the way, if you're interested in motorcycle paint detailing, I have some videos that go over that topic. I'm going to put links in the description of this video if you want to watch those videos. I'll also link to one of them up above. Okay, we're definitely better, uh, but there's still 
still some uh, I'm gonna go over it a little more I don't think we're quite there yet during this time lapse of me doing the second uh, polish on this tank I think I want to point out that this is really not a reflection on Indian in any way. Uh, this was a transport company that they hired to deliver the bike to me from California. And the presumption is that this, uh, uh, these scratches occurred during that transportation process. Okay, it's not perfect, but it's, uh, I'd say, a lot better. You can see in the reflection not nearly as much. There's still a few little scratches here. I'm going to work on those a little more. And up here. But uh, most of the major uh, marring is gone. I'm going to continue to work on this a little bit more. I'm probably going to hit it one more time with this correcting cream. And then I'm going to come back with the perfecting cream and give it a, a finer polish. But you can see it, there is a big improvement. I ended up working on this gas tank for probably 30 to 35 minutes total. Honestly, the scratches in the marring were worse than I thought they were. I probably should have used the fast correcting cream from Griot's, which has a higher cut. But uh, I just took a little bit longer and did the best I could with what I had. Now, once I finished with that correcting cream, I'm now using a yellow pad with the uh, perfecting cream, they call it, from Griot's, which is kind of their mild polish. It's the, it's the mildest polish they make uh, before you actually apply some sort of uh, actual protection to the paint. It looks much better than it did. It's not perfect. There are still some, uh, some scratches. If you get real up close and look at it carefully, you'll see a few more scratches here and there. But I've spent about 30 minutes on this. I don't want to spend too much more time. I just want it to look good when I take pictures and video. And it's certainly 100% better than it was. Okay, now to offer just a little bit of protection. I'm going to go over it with this uh, Hybrid Solutions ceramic spray coating. This is what I use on the Lexus and it works very well and at least it will give the paint some protection. So let's hit it with and shake it up really good. The only thing is you can't, you can really over apply this. And I'm just going to spread it around here. It won't hurt the seat. It won't hurt the chrome. And then I'll come back with a, another microfiber to wipe this down, buff it off. This stuff is really good stuff. It smells good, it goes on easy, it comes off easy, and it provides some really nice water beading and shedding and just good protection. In fact, I'll probably go over the entire bike with this uh, ceramic uh, coating, uh, just because that's the way I am. I'm gonna spray a little more on here, and I'm gonna hit it again. And then if you feel it now, oh man, it's like, it's better than glass. It is just super, super slick. Really, really slick. So here I am under the left side cover. I removed the side cover. It's very easy to remove. It only has like three grommets like this that hold it in place. And this is the fuse box. And to remove the fuse box, you just basically press in on these two little tabs here and lift it out. It kind of has a waterproof uh, gasket, so it, it, it might stick. And on the inside, it has a legend to tell you which fuses go to which circuits. That, that's nice. Now, they do offer or they do provide a fuse puller but it's in the tool kit, and I have no idea where the tool kit is on this bike. Uh, so rather than getting out the manual, 
<clears throat> in researching it, I'm just going to pull out this 7.5 amp fuse that I replaced the other day. If you'll remember, uh, this fuse was blown. This is the fuse for the battery tender, and it's supposed to be a 10 amp fuse, and I did not have a 10 amp fuse. I replaced it with a 7.5 amp. So now I'm just going to pull out this 7.5 amp fuse. I'm just going to use a pair of needle nose pliers and we'll replace it with this 10 amp. And believe me, there you can kind of see the 10 there. Okay, let's pull it out. It just pops right out. And then we will put the 10 amp in its place. I apologize to end in for not putting a easy to read 10 amp fuse in its place but it is a 10 amp fuse nonetheless okay it feels kind of weird the way it fit in there let's see pull that back out and check it make sure it's in there correctly yeah it is okay there we go that feels good some of these fuses have a little spring on them. I've never seen that before. Uh, like this 25 amp, this 10 amp. They have like a little, I don't know what it is, like a little cushion. Has anybody ever seen that before? I've never noticed those before on any other motorcycle or car. This one has one, but the rest of them don't. So it's kind of strange. That's why some of them look like they're sticking up a little higher than others. And then we'll just replace the side cover. You'll notice there's these pins here. There's three of these bosses. And there's one, two, three rubber grommets. Now normally I would put a little silicone lubricant on there, but nah, I'm not going to today. And let's just line these up. And uh, hopefully this will just uh, snap into place. They're pretty firm grommets, I will say. So, yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, so side cover's back on.